Shall I just introduce myself and... Yeah, please yeah. do. Yeah. Ready? Mm -hmm. uh, so, hi, I'm Harry Hardy, uh, and I've been working with the um, Nobel Peace Center on this exhibition in Afghanistan. And the parts I've been involved in as a kind of curatorial role is with the two sort of major photographic exhibitions. Um, one is a show uh, by an American photographer, Lindsay Adario, and the other show is uh, by the late Tim Hetherington. Lindsay Adario's exhibition, um, Veiled Rebellion, is an overview of where um, women are in contemporary Afghanistan. Um, whereas Tim Hetherington's show, Infidel, is a very specific uh, look at a group of young American soldiers, GIs, in a, a certain outpost in the Karungal Valley in Afghanistan. Both are very in-depth studies, photographically, uh, and with the content and research and so on. But they're such different shows. Um, and what I find interesting about this, this exhibition in Afghanistan is y y you see a Dario show, and you think, OK, so now I'm going to see the opposite. So I've, I've seen the women, now I'm going to see the men. But of course, nothing is, is that simple. You know, uh, this is a small ground of, of almost teenage guys, this Tim Hetherington work. Um, whereas, as I said, Lindsay, Lindsay's is an overview. And so what's brave about this exhibition, which I keep on kind of coming back to, is that it doesn't answer any questions. Each time you turn the corner and you think you're going to find the opposite, you, you don't. You just get asked another question that opens up. So it, it's all about not being black and white, not being A and B. It's about being something completely different. And that's brave because you start to make connections between things. So what, what's missing in this exhibition is maybe the Afghan men. You know, you think you've got the Afghan women, maybe we're going to look at the Afghan men, but you don't. You turn the corner and you've got these American young boys goofing around, uh, you know, play fighting. Um, so, so it asks lots of questions, and, and the problem is it doesn't answer any of them. But I think that as a metaphor for a country in conflict is really interesting. Whatever your feelings are about the sort of um, American engagement in Afghanistan, you can't but ho sort of start relating to these guys. Even if you don't agree with their politics or even what they're reading, whether it's Guns and Ammo or Playboy or, uh, or worse, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a show about empathy, but it's, it's never asking you to empathize with any side in particular. Lindsay's show is, a, it's, it's fantastically positive, one minute, and then you turn the corner and it's, it's super depressing. So you, you, you never quite know where you stand. Um, but it's also a show about journalism, I think, and the role of the photographer or the role of the artist or the role of the journalist, whatever you want to call it, in the work. Um, and I think it's about also how photography has changed. Photography as, as a tool for journalism is getting much more complicated than it used to be. You could say that sort of photojournalism um, uh, in, in sort of a bygone era was very, I don't know if the right word is reactionary, but something happens and so you photograph it to illustrate what's going on. Whereas now that kind of seems to be not, not good enough. Um, there has to be probably more of the photographer in the work. I, I've always come back to this thing of uh, photography has a responsibility, or documentary photography has a responsibility. Um, if, you, if you boil it down to its basics, and a photograph is sometimes like pointing at something. I keep on coming back to this, but I like it. It's, it's deciding what to look at and what to make other people look at. Um, and I think both these exhibitions are really good examples of that. So Tim Hetherington decided this particular outpost, this one specific place in this moment in history. And Lindsay decided to do this really big, epic kind of study. But that's their decision. And you have to kind of realize the responsibility of a photographer of what they're pointing at, what they're drawing your attention to. And that's, a lot, that's very personal to them. So I think it, it, there's so much inter interesting elements to this exhibition, whether it's you're interested in in the content, whether you're interested in photography, whether you're interested in the role of a journalist, um, whether you're interested in conflict, you know, or how it's represented. I mean, 
I mean, the, the, there's also that we've tried to make this exhibition more than just pictures on the wall. It's, it's more of an installation. So we've played with ideas, like for example, all of Hetherington's pictures are, are printed on posters. We wanted to play with this idea of, uh, of sort of youth. You know, when we were all young, we all had posters of, um, I don't know, Jimi Hendrix or whatever on the wall. And so we're playing with this idea of heroes and who, who are the heroes. And also it kind of, it, 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 um, kind of resonates with this idea of the camp. We've, uh, I mean, if we look over here, there's, we, we put a lot of the pictures on this plywood, which kind of echoes some of the pictures. There's plywood in the camps and so on. Uh, this exhibition was first shown when Tim was, um, was alive in a uh, host gallery uh, in London, which is now the Photo 8 gallery. Um, and it was very similar. It was posters again, and this idea of slightly repli replicating the camp. And just, you know, there was a conscious decision not to show the conflict pictures, the bang bang pictures. We wanted to show just what it's like to be a young man in a situation like this. So it's not what you'd expect. It's not a conflict. It's not a set of conflict pictures. I mean, I think the most, the most beautiful ones, uh, which I say they're not conflict pictures, whereas I'd argue that. Um, there's a whole section of the sleeping soldiers. I don't know if you can see this, but there's, a, there's eight, uh, nine prints of um, these pictures that Hetherington took of, of the, US, the US troops when they were asleep. But this is in the outpost. And for me, I think these are amazing examples of contemporary conflict, war photography, as it were. And you could argue, but it's, it's just a picture of a young, and they're quite beautiful boys asleep. But once you realize, once you re this is how photography's got more complicated as well, is once you realize where these pictures are, these are on the front line in one of the most, you know, vicious, where some of the most vicious fighting is going on, you suddenly think about what, the, what this boy is dreaming about. Is he dreaming about his brother that he lost last week? Is he dreaming about um, uh, the fighting that's gonna happen tomorrow? Or is he dreaming about, you know, his, um, his dog back home and his mum's lasagna that she makes so well or whatever it is and that becomes so poignant and for me being ranty about it I wish the newspapers would sometimes run a picture like that on the front cover not a picture that we've seen before of a tank on fire or you know I know all these pictures are important but sometimes give, making the audience do a bit more work whether the, what's happening in this picture isn't in the photograph it's happening in your head and what you imagine and it, it's happening in his head to be honest so I hope that makes some kind of sense but I think Throughout this show, it's asking questions and deliberately giving no answers. I think that's the point. So, you know, there is no answer in Afghanistan. You know, I'm, I'm not saying I'm an expert, you know, I deal with photography, but there are so many things like the situation in Afghanistan. It's far too complicated to do in an exhibition like this. It's, it's a huge thing. But what photography can do, and what Dario's pictures do, and what Tim Hetherington's pictures do, and more importantly, what this whole exhibition with all the other elements does, is just ask the questions and, like I said, deliberately doesn't answer them. Thanks. <laughs>